Hey guys, uh, just a short video today on uh, basically transitioning from Objective-C to Swift, which seems relatively daunting on kind of uh, looking around sort of the first sort of manual and everything, uh, but realistically it's not too different, it's just a slight syntax change. Um, so for Swift is certainly capable of doing some really, really big, exciting things, but migrating from Objective-C to Swift isn't too difficult. So I'm going to run you through how to create a, a little checklist app today uh, using ent uh, built entirely in Swift. Um, and this is coming from somebody who didn't know Swift yesterday. So bear with me if I have you know stumble. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and create an Xcode project. I'm going to open an empty application, and I'm going to go with the name. Uh, my awesome uh, checklist. So yeah, this is just going to be a checklist. Obviously, you're going to want to make sure your language is set to, sh to Swift, and we're just going to be building for iPhone today. We're not going to be using Core Data, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pop a folder called Swift checklist and hit create. And everything kind of seems very, very similar to uh, what it was before, with the exception of uh, we don't have headers and implementations anymore. We just have Swift files, which kind of work as class files, and they actually have all their data contained in them. Okay, so now that we've got our app all set and ready, I'm going to go ahead and right-click on my awesome checklist folder and create a new file, and it's going to be of the Cocoa Touch class which is obviously a little bit different to creating uh, headers and implementation files, but the effect is still pretty much the same. So I'm just going to go next, and it's going to be of the type UI. It's going to be a subclass of a UI view controller, and we're just going to call it view controller. I think that makes sense. Uh, so I'll create that. Okay, so... Uh, if you've coded in Objective-C before, you're going to start seeing that a lot of the methods um, actually do kind of rear their heads around here. Like this is your standard kind of init function, uh, view did load and did, did receive memory warning. They're just, uh, they're, instead of having, instead of being uh, described as methods, they're described as functions because that's how Swift works. There's no such thing as methods now, it's just functions. So I'm obviously going to get rid of all of the ones that, that I never ever use, such as uh, did receive m uh, memory warning, and we're not going to be using navigation, so just to clear up the file, I'm going to delete those, and I'm going to hit save, and I'll get rid of this comment as well. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create a property, or um, we're going to actually want to create a table view, which would have been a property in Objective-C. Now, the way that you do that is instead of, uh, obviously, you would usually go to the header file, uh, declare the property there, and then import it into here. Um, now, if, uh, Swift doesn't actually require that. You can actually just enter it in line. So what I'm going to do is just underneath the class view controller, UI view controller section, I'm going to create a variable Call, um, variable. I'm going to call it um, text view. Uh, sorry, I'm going to call it table view. I'm going to put a colon and define it as the UI, uh, UI table view, and I'm going to hit exclamation mark. That, that basically just tells Swift that there will be a table view showing up uh, later on in the code. Okay, so now that we've actually set up our table view, or rather uh, set up the property for it, we're also going to want to set up a text field that we're going to be uh, kind of using for the rest of the app. So I'm going to go ahead and call it var text field, UI text field. And again, same again, add an exclamation mark at the end, because again, it's something that whilst we're not actually using it, well, whilst we haven't actually defined it yet, we do actually want to declare it, so to speak. Um, so now that we've got all that set up, let's go ahead and set it up in our view. Now, the nice thing about um, uh, nice thing about these is you can actually quite easily find out the required. Uh, you can actually find out the required functions quite quickly just by holding down Command and clicking on the uh, subclass that you want to find out more about. Um, instantly, we get that whichever is un immediately underneath and doesn't have uh, isn't uh, prepended with optional. Um, is a required um, is a is a required function, um, so that's quite useful. Just to note. Um, okay, so let's set up our table view. So the way that we do that is by going self dot text field, and then equals UI text field, and in brackets set up the frame. So you can go CG rect make again brackets. Um, I'm gonna have that auto complete for me because. Makes things easier. 
um, and uh, set the x coordinates to the top, x and y coordinates to the top, sorry. I'm going to set the width to self.view.bounds.size.width and the height to 100. Um, so that should pretty much get our text field um, up and ready. Just to make sure, I'm going to set the uh, background color to a UI color, red color. Again, if you're relatively familiar with Objective-C, this should start looking familiar, but just in a slightly different syntax and phrase differently. So I'm aware that I was meant to be setting up the table view here and I've accidentally set up the text field, but it's not a problem. We, we need to do both of them anyway. So I'm gonna go ahead and add this to add this sub view to the main view by going self.view.addSubView, self.textField. And uh, while we're here, we do actually need to set the delegates, so we might as well uh, get all that sorted as well. So to, uh, whereas beforehand you would have needed to go into the header folder and type in angle brackets the delegates, you don't actually need to do that. You just need to separate each class that you want your class to inherit by uh, commas. So we can go UI text field delegate. Um, we're also going to be using the UI table view delegate as well as the UI table view data source. So there's quite a lot in there. Um, and as you can see, we've got a warning, which is always a good thing. And um, basically it says type view controller does not conform to protocol UI table view source. Now what that means is there are required functions which have not been declared yet. So we just can go ahead and click on, uh, we, again, by holding that down command, we can click on UI table view source. And straight away we can see at the very, very top there are two which are not optional. We've got one which is table view number of rows in section, which is returned as an inter integer value. And one here which is a, f a table view which returns, uh, which is a self row index path which returns a UI table view cell. So if you've ever worked in uh, with table views in iOS before, these should both sound pretty familiar. Um, so we're going to need both of those, so I'm going to go ahead and just literally copy and paste those straight out of the uh, UI kit um, uh, table view framework bit and we'll segment this off. So I'll go table view data source delegate, go ahead and paste both of those down there, open curly brackets and remove these comments, keep things nice and clean moment so let's go ahead and create ourselves our actual data source which is going to be an array um, which at the moment is going to be empty because we want our text field to be feeding that data um, so let's go ahead and go var let's call it table view data and that's going to be an array now to set up an array you just literally go equals and open and close square brackets, and that's all you require. That's all that's required. That that basically creates an empty array for us, um, which is exactly what we need to do right now. Uh, okay, so now that we've got ourselves uh, table view data. We need to set our we need to set up our table view, which we said we were going to do earlier on, but we didn't. So let's go ahead and do that. Keep everything nice and neat. So let's set up our table view. Self dot table view equals UI table view. And again in brackets and then we can set up our frame and our style so let's go ahead and set our frame to CG rec make zero and we'll set the uh, Y offset to 100 because that's the size of our text field uh, set the width to self.view.bounds.size.width and we'll set the height to self.view.bounds.size.height minus 100 and then we can set the style to UI table view style. And whereas before constants were kind of uh, just literally app like append the, the the description was appended immediately after the word, these are now actually you actually access those by the dot notation, which is a lot cleaner and a lot easier with Swift. So we're going to go with uh, UI table view style uh, plain. Nothing too exciting too, too exciting here. And then let's go ahead and uh, register a class. So we'll go table view dot register class, and we're going to want to register our cell class for the cell reuse identifier, which is going to be our uh, table view data source. Um, so our cell class. Now this this tripped me up, and I was I spent ages trying to figure this one out. Um, our cell class is actually UI table view cell, and you'll it you would instantly like kind of assume that you would type class that's been deprecated is by going self 
Um, so UI table view cell dot self will return the cell class, which does kind of make sense in Swift's uh, logic. And the cell reuse identifier we're going to use is my cell. Uh, so there we go. So that's the uh, class registered. That's our table view set up. Um, let's go ahead and add this sub view to our uh, to our uh, to our main view. So self dot table view. And now that we've got these all set up, we can actually go ahead and uh, get these uh, get these data sources on the go. So we're going to want to return the amount of objects in the table view data. So let's go return table view data dot count. Nice and easy. And then let basically defines a, a constant. So we're going to go UI table view. Oh, sorry. We're going to go let my new cell equals or rather of the type UI table view cell. That's not necessary, but I quite like doing it because it's good practice. UI table view cell. And we're going to want to go target the table view and DQ re, uh, a reusable cell with the identifier for index path. So let's set the identifier to my cell and set the index path to the index path as UI table view cell. And that should clear everything up. So then we can return that cell, my new cell, but not before we go ahead and actually set up our cell with the data that we want it to uh, read out, which is my new cell dot text equals uh, we've got an error which says cannot convert the expressions type open and, uh, open and close brackets to type string the reason for that is uh, we it, we haven't actually defined what data the table view data array is going to have inside it and the way that we do that is by going string prepending the array with string and then opening and closing brackets and what that basically says to it is that this this array is going to be filled with strings uh, and nothing else. That's that's the way it's going to work. It should be assumed that strings are going to be inside this uh, array, which is exactly what we want. So my new cell dot text equals self dot table view dot uh, data with the index path dot row. So that's everything uh, pretty much sorted, I think. So let's go ahead and while we're here, we might as well actually just set up a, a couple of lines just to make sure that is actually feeding in the data correctly. So let's go uh, my text one, my text two, and we're gonna hit save and refresh, uh, sorry, and load the app. And we have not set it up in the delegate, so we haven't actually pointed this to our view controller. So let's go ahead and do that. Pop it into the app delegate. And uh, we're going to want to remove this self window dot background color uh, function and go ahead and actually set up our view controller as our view controller. Now, the way that we do that is by going let root vc, and it's type of view controller equals view controller. And then in brackets nib name bundle. So this is our initiate. Uh, this is our initiate function. Um, we don't have a nib name. We don't have a bundle. So let's go ahead and fill those both with nil. And then we can go ahead and go self dot window exclamation mark dot set root. Oh sorry, root view controller equals root vc. That's me thinking in Objective C and not Swift. <laughs> Um, so that should now have our root view controller all set up. So now when I hit re, uh, when I hit Command R, we now have a table view. We also have this hideous looking uh, UI text field at the top, which takes data. Perfect, but obviously doesn't actually feed back anything. However, as you may have noticed, we don't actually have a any text and uh, any text in our cells, which should be happening. And the reason for that is because we have not set our data source or our delegates up. So let's go ahead and go self dot table view dot delegate equals self because we've actually already defined that earlier on right up here. UI table view delegate. And let's go self dot table view dot data source equals self because again we've actually run the function, we've actually uh, created the functions required for UI table view data source right down here. So now when I reload it, we should now see my text one and my text two, which is perfect. However, we want the data from the UI text field to come down into here. That's the entire idea of a checklist is that you can create items and then they will pop down into, into here. So let's go ahead and find out exactly what, uh, what what kind of functions we can use or harness from text from, te from the text field. 
So I'm going to command and click on UI text field. And we've got a load of uh, optional functions, which, and we're looking for the one which uh, basically detects the uh, action when the button return is touched, uh, which should be something along the lines of text field should return. So again, what I'm going to do here is just going to copy the function without the optional and go backwards. And then in our, move this up a little bit, and then in our main view controller, I'm going to go ahead and set the text field delegate right here and that basically sets up our text field should return and we can then go open brackets and close brackets perfect so it's it's after a, it's after a boolean we do want it to return we do want the we do want the function to actually complete so let's go ahead and go return true and we're also going to want to get rid of the keyboard when we hit return so let's go ahead and go text field dot first sorry, resign first responder, which uh, will get rid of our keyboard entirely. And then what we're going to want to do is take the text that we've typed into there, uh, into our text field so far, and add it into our table view data array right up here. So the way that we do that is by going, uh, so after so after return has been pressed, so we can assume that somebody's actually typed something into our uh, checklist, we can go table view data dot append and type in this new element. So this is something new with Swift is append is our way of uh, basically setting and uh, setting and adding uh, new objects to an array. So our new element that we want to add to it is going to be the text field dot text. Uh, then straight after that's straight after that's been added, we can then actually set the text fields uh, text back to zero or rather back to, uh, back to empty, so that's what I'll be doing, and then we'll be removing the keyboard and returning true. So that all seems fine. The only thing is, is we've now that we've actually added the table view data to the, uh, we've added the new data to the table view data array, we haven't actually told the table view to update accordingly. So let's go ahead and target ourselves. oh sorry, accidentally opened a double quote there. Uh, so let's go ahead and go self.tableView, dot reload data straight afterwards. So let's just walk through that again. What we're going to do is after return's been hit, um, the button return on the keyboard, what it's going to do is it's going to append uh, new, that text uh, that was entered into the text field to the table view data array. So it's going to add it in. Uh, it's going to reset the text field dot text. We're going to be uh, reloading the table view data and we're going to be resigning the first responder, which is the keyboard. So we're going to be sending the keyboard off the screen and returning true. So all in all, if we run the app now, this should be pretty much everything. So now we've got our items here. We've got my text one and my text two. So let's go uh, by washing up liquid and hit return. Of course, nothing happens. Now, the reason nothing has happened uh, is because of the same reason that I forgot to do last time, which is again setting the text field delegate to self. And again, if we run it, I always forget about the delegate. Um, and again, so if we go by washing up liquid and then hit return, everything works. Um, okay, so uh, that's uh, everything altogether. I mean, that's just my little app that I created in Swift. So hopefully that should give you a, an idea as to how easy it is to transition to Swift. Um, my Twitter is uh, at the bottom of the screen right now. Um, this video has gone on a lot longer than I wanted it to. And hopefully you made sense of what I had to say. I've also got the project file, which if you're interested, I'll go ahead and upload it to uh, GitHub or something along those lines. And then you can uh, take a look and poke around in it yourself. Um, so thanks very much for watching, uh, take care and enjoy Swift.